Hello, everybody. It is Sunday night, 6 p.m. on the West Coast. The name of the show is Intuitive Inc., and I am Servette Hassan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have a wonderful show tonight, especially if you're married or want to be married or want to know more about marriage, even if you're not. It, it's, a, it's a really great show. I've got Cato calling in from London, England, and she just tried in a second ago, and it, we had a really bad connection, so she's going to come back on the line again. Her name is Kate Irugbu, and it's I-R-O-E-G-B-U. She is a Nigerian Irish national based in the uh, United Kingdom. She's in London, so it's 2 a.m. there. So it, this is really awesome of her to come on the show. She is a talk show host and a an, an motivational speaker. Her show is called The Kato Show. So it's it's awesome, and, and the, the line we had was just not good. It was crackly. And so I asked her to call back, and so now she's not on the line. So I don't know what's going on there, but you know how that is when you're doing an international call and things get a little tricky. So I'm sure, certain, that she will be calling in any second. (laughs) So we will have Kate O from the Kate O Show. I think O is her middle, the O is her middle name because her last name is I-R-O-E-G-B-U. And here she is. So here we go. Let's get her on the line. Hello. Hello, Kate. Kate. Hello, Miss Person. Yeah. You are live on the air. We went live at six o'clock here and I just introduced you. And said that um, it was awesome of you. Really a privilege to have you call in, especially when it's 2 a.m. in London. So really welcome. Thank you. We appreciate it on a Sunday night. Actually, it's Monday morning for you. So (laughs) welcome. (laughs) Welcome. And I I already introduced you and I've told them that you're the host of the Kate O Show and that you're a motivational speaker. And um, I yeah. wanted to ask you, because you, okay. the the last show I heard of yours is called What Every Woman Should Avoid in Marriage, and we were going to talk about marriage today, and what what got you interested in that subject? What made you decide to talk about that? And is that the only thing you talk about on your show, or do you delve into other relationship issues? No, I talk about, you know, several diverse issues, uh, any challenging issues that uh, concerns humanity, that's what I talk about. Mm-hmm. But I was so in, I'm so interested in, in that topic, marriage, because I've, been, I've spoken, uh, you know, quite a lot. I'm, I must say I've spoken quite a lot about marriage mm-hmm. because uh, there are certain issues in marriage that people tend to ignore. Right. And uh, what happens is that the outcome, the, 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 the outcome of the fundamental issues you know, those are what people are actually seeing, and that's what people mention. So I decided to talk about it because, due to the high rate of divorce and broken families, I believe that if we know what to do and what to avoid in marriage, then our marriage will be secured. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Is this because you're married, or were you married? I'm married, and I've spoken to a lot. Of, I've come across lots of uh, married people. I've counseled a lot of, you know, married. You know, people mm-hmm. people who have had a relationship for 10 years, you know, mm-hmm. having a child out of wedlock and looking forward to getting married, having terrible crises, and those who are in marriage as well. Mm-hmm. And by the grace of God, when they contacted me, I was able to speak to them, and they resolved their issues, and they come back to me and say, Kate, how, what did you say to this person? How did you do it? That mm-hmm. my husband has been, you know, behaving himself. He's been excellent. In <laughs> fact, there was a lady, the spouse actually, they've been together. They have a daughter, a 10-year-old daughter. And she said to me, her partner, I've told her she, he's not getting married to her anymore, that they're going apart. But after speaking to them, they actually picked up a date for their wedding. And they've done their wedding now. Good. Speaking so to both of them? them? Speaking in to that both? area, so... Yeah. yeah, were you speaking to both of them, or were you speaking to the woman? Woman, I speak to both of them. Good, because I believe that marriage, mm-hmm. only one party cannot actually do much, no matter how much determined, how much dedicated a woman or a man is to their relationship. 
if the effort is just on one party, it makes the other person to actually suffer. So I always like to speak to both of them because each, both the man and the woman have a role to play right. for the success Absolutely. of the bridge. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's a passion of yours. You you want to see marriage? Married myself. I've been married for sixteen years. In June June this year, I'll be to be sixteen years in marriage, and I have personally, you know, have some issues in marriage as well. And understanding marriage is different from when you're dating. So I really, really, and you know, have that passion to help people, right. you know, in relationship of, you know, mar- in real married relationship, mm-hmm. because I've spoken to a lot of, quite a lot of people as well, but I, I believe that speaking to them, they don't actually understand, you know, the basis of marriage and what to expect. Okay, well, we're going to touch on that. So, and I loved what you said in this last show, or uh, maybe it was another show I listened to yours. It was marriage is meant to be enjoyed and not endured. And that's, Absolutely, yeah, which is that's true. Awesome. It's true. Absolutely, that is that is the key because people tend to think marriage is a place for endurance. Because when they take the vow, you take a vow on wedding day. They say marriage, you know, for so far, for better, for worse, for you know, to death do you apart. People tend to mistake that to be suffering. You see, <laughs> but I told them on one of my show recent show, I said, listen. The path for you to endure, is, it means that you should, you know, when your partner is going through challenging situations, you have to endure with them. You have to, you know, be part of it. Maybe, for instance, you have a, a partner who is having some financial challenges, maybe lost their job or they are ill. Mm-hmm. Then that is when the endurance will come in. You have to endure with them. You have to sympathize with them. You have to help them go through the situation. Right. But not you as a married couple or a married individual using your own attitude or ignorance, whether knowingly or knowingly, to cause, you know, adverse situation to make your marriage to be a chaos and think your partner should endure because mm-hmm. you are in a relationship. Absolutely no. Well, that is a no, no, no. Right. Marriage is okay. a place for enjoyment and not endurance. Right. Okay. But what if you hang in there and you're in the same boat together and you support someone who's lost a job or, you know, something like that, and it just goes on and on and on? How do you know when to give up? When do you know when to keep trying and being there for that person? Or when you when do you know it's just not going to fix itself you know that is why that is the reason what i said well that is the reason why before even you go into a marriage relationship Mm -hmm. those are the big they are basic things that we need to actually look at for in our spouse that was why i did a show as well tips you know Mm -hmm. before you actually giving a marriage proposal and tips also on you as a woman for you as a woman to actually you know, understand before accepting a marriage proposal. So if you have a spouse who is is a lazy, if, if your spouse happens to be someone who is lazy or who is not, you know, focused mm-hmm. in life, then you can have that kind of challenge when you're enduring. Because if someone is out of job, you should know that when your partner is enduring with you, he doesn't stop. He can see you going on the computer, you're looking for a job, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And if something comes up, for you to do meanwhile before you get the real big job that you're looking for, you go ahead for it. That is what it means for you to understand, you know, your spouse before you actually go ahead and make sure that you're on the same boat and you have the same focus. Because right. oftentimes people go into married relationship without even having the same dream or having the same goal in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. A lot of people don't really know each other that well first, and then they get in it, and it's, uh, you know, things happen. People, you know, it's not so much that people change. It's just they didn't know them that well to begin with. So it's important, I think, if you're going to get married, that you spend time really, I mean, there are some people that know more about their hairdresser than they do about the man that they're going to get married because they're just in such a hurry to get married, you know? Exactly. And so, exactly yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, it, it it's important to know that. But now, do you think people change as they 
grow and get older and you're still together? Do people, you know, what, what happens when people become different people as you grow? Do you, I know it's easy yeah, to say grow together, is, but. Yeah, because sometimes when, when, when um, a man or a woman is desperate to get, you know, into a relationship or make a relationship work, I call it play up. Some people could play up. Uh-huh. Pay they could up? play up, but also... Are you it, saying... At that stage, play, when I say play up, trying to put up, you know, what they are not. Uh, oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. They're playing up. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. They okay. can play up. So that being when opposing. they play up, yeah. mm-hmm. then in the relationship, their true color we have to show as well. Mm-hmm. You see? You can only pretend for a while. You can't pretend for too long. And I also can say people can change as well, maybe with environment, you know, mm-hmm. the kind of friends they, they associate with. That could also, you know, cause some changes in relationship. But the major thing is that when the foundation of that relationship, mm-hmm. you know, is secured, meaning that it's based on love, it's for the mutual, you know, benefit of both couples, when challenging, challenges the situation, challenging situation arises, you can deal with it. Right, right. But yeah, would you have any advice for people to know before they get married what they should be looking for, like to get more in depth than they of might? Of course, absolutely, definitely. Mm-hmm. It's very important because oftentimes we just look at the surface, you know, right. look at the, you mm-hmm. know, face value, we just say, oh, good looking woman, good looking man. And the next thing we, we've we've known ourselves for some time, I think we should lead, you know, end the relationship. You know, should you know should you know lead the, uh, the relationship towards marriage. But oftentimes, you you happen it happens that most of these couples coming together have not actually you know known each other very well. Not because of the time spent, but because we don't actually pay attention to those basic things that we need to pay attention to when we are dating. Mm-hmm. Right, you should you you like I said, you need to know more about this person than just the friend or some somebody else. This is something you know because I know I remember Julia Child who is married for a very long time before even before we knew who she was when she wrote all those wonderful cookbooks. But she said the secret okay. to a happy marriage is finding the right person, and that you know you're right. You know you're right if you love to be with them all the time. So basically, she was saying, marry your best friend. She married her best friend. Exactly. You know, and she really got to know him before she married him. And they were married a long time till death do they part is where they went with that. You know, they were they knew each other so well. They were. That is very important. That is why on the on the show I did the Mm -hmm. five tips for you to truly enjoy your marriage. The first one I mentioned was togetherness. Mm-hmm. Where your couple, where couples unite together, have something to do together, mm-hmm. because in that process, that is where you have to know yourselves more. Okay, right. So now, what what do you do though if you're you're in a marriage and you're having problems? I mean that now you you realize you don't have anything to do together and you don't have any uh, mutual. <laughs> uh, at things that you like, you know, like men that just yeah. want to watch sports and the wife doesn't, or you want him to find a job and he's not. What do you do then? Do you do you suggest marriage counseling for them? Or exactly, you know? so just marriage counseling and also, you know, have time together to talk about things because that is very important. When when issues like that arises in marriage, couples should be able to have in you know, a quiet time to actually, you know, be transparent. Because oftentimes, maybe the one party will be thinking, oh, I'm so strong, especially, you know, I'm so tough, I'm strong, I don't need help. We should also learn to, you know, open up to our spouse to know our weaknesses so we can help them in that area. So it's very important we talk about it. And if the talking is not working, then I would advise to move to counseling. Absolutely. Right. I, I agree. I, I think, you know, my big thing when I talk about relationships, one of my books is called The Intuitive Heart of Romance. And I, you know, one of the keys to me is communication. It's like nothing. (laughs) And I suggest too a date night that every couple have a date night, no matter what, 
no matter how busy they are, no matter how many children they have, that they get together and it's just the two of them and that they continue, you date your husband, you know, or date your wife, you know, you you should date because then that way you can keep the lines of communication open. You have to keep talking, right? That's, that's it. That's it. That's very important. That's why I said the five tips. One of them I mentioned was unity, togetherness, and friendliness. Because you, your husband must be your friend, and you must have to do something together. And I also went ahead to talk about reviving your sexual life, mm-hmm. because sexual intimacy has become one of the common problems in marriages today. Marriage is supposed to be a place where, you know, sex should be, you know, something that is present and common, but it doesn't happen like that all the time. You know, you, you, you see women who are married and they tell you, oh, please forget about that. Do you know the last time, you know, we had all this kind of, please, I don't even do that anymore. I'm like, what do you mean by that? I say, your husband is not your brother, he's your husband. You right. understand that? So, <laughs> right. Yes. In marriage, I, told, I said to that, I said, I said on one of my shows, I said, if you are married, it's either you've enjoyed sex in the past, or you're looking forward to having sex if you married, got married as a virgin. So why would you pretend about it? You cannot be in a married relationship and you don't want to have sex. Right. You, you have a choice to be single or right. to be married. So when you decide to be married, you must be someone that wants sex in your relationship because that is the glue that keeps the man and the woman together. Right. Well, and if you're with somebody that you you like to be with all the time, then that shouldn't be an issue. But it is. It's a big issue for a lot of couples. There, it fades. It, it loses. Is there there a good is there a good tip from you on on how to revive a sexual life? Yes. What I said. What I used mm-hmm. was to accessorize it. <laughs> to accessorize it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it. Yeah. You have to make it, you know, something uh-huh. that is interesting, something you look forward to. Uh-huh. You see couples now, in the morning, both couples wake up, husband and wife, one goes left, one goes right to work, and before they come back, there's no communication. What happens if your woman opens her phone during her lunch break and she sees, oh, honey, I really liked how we had it last night. I'm looking forward, you com- looking forward to you coming back home today. Or, or I really missed you. Or say something. You know, because I said on one of my show, which is uh, love, uh, marriage is to be enjoyed and not endured. I said, if in 24 hours you do not have anything, you know, positive, anything good to tell your spouse about, you know, to talk to your spouse about, then we need to rejuvenate your relationship. Mm-hmm. Because when people are dating, they tend to do all those. But once you're married, you think, Maybe early marriage is fine, but after a while, they tend to, you know, push all the excuses to, you know, family, children, business. I said, listen, it doesn't matter how many children you've got in your relationship. It doesn't matter how busy you are. Those are just excuses for you to ruin your marriage. And at the end of the day, you still come up blaming each other. Why are we, you know, doing the blame part? Why don't we do the right thing and enjoy our marriage? Well, so right. the first key is to accessorize it. That is mm-hmm. having, you know, that, you know, that relationship, that connection, even before you, the bedtime, because I told someone, I said, listen, there is one they call direct boss. <laughs> what is it? What you don't expect that to have direct boss with your spouse. Just come oh, home. Yeah. You just have sex when it's time for sex. No, mm-hmm. you need to make it look some, look, you know, become something that you're actually looking forward to having. Mm-hmm. That is, you, the communication before that time, when you come home, the environment, play romantic music, when you know, have right. kind of talk with your partner that will actually, you know, lead to that. It's more exciting that way. Well, you know, what it's, not, the... it's, it's not a robotic thing that you just do like a robot, right. you know, just exactly. want to have sex and that's it. No. Well, and one of the biggest complaints I hear from men um, is yeah. that, they always have to kind of initiate things and that bothers them, you know, because they, they're, they're, that's the biggest complaint I hear from them when it comes to to intimacy and sex is, is that they're the ones that always have to start it and, and they get tired of that and they, they would enjoy the other partner 
they'd like it to be mutual, actually. You know, like exactly. That is why I on the show I did, which was um, uh, what a woman must avoid in marriage. That was one of the things I asked the women to to avoid, mm-hmm. because because of tradition and maybe different reasons, upbringing, people, women think it has to be the man, and I said no. Mm-hmm. There's no. There's no way to reason that the man has to be the one to, you know, to... Yeah, I agree. You can do it yourself. You cannot be, you know, even if you have to ask for it and, you know, you have to. When you If you need your man, you should be able to say it. It's not the man telling you all the time. I said it clearly on that show, what I said, what every woman must avoid in mind. We must avoid it, expecting the man to be the one to initiate it at all times. No, it's not. It's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, it is wrong. So the woman, you have urges well for sex, just the same way the man should have his own. It might be in different way, but the man has his own urge for sex as well. So mm-hmm. when you have the urge, why would you wait for your man to come and ask you for it? You should be uh, able to talk to your, you know, to, yeah. to initiate it. You are right, because that is a big issue. Because we women, we tend to complain a lot sometimes. Oh, the man don't pay us so much attention. And I said, instead of the complaint, why don't we do the right thing? Let me address this now. That was why I said, no, the woman should not be the one expecting it all the time, but the woman should learn to initiate it. Mm-hmm. Well, That's a big issue as well in marriage. Right, yeah. I, don't, marriage. I, I have a tendency to initiate it too much. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> it's you know. you're, you're, when you initiate it, the man knows that, Liz, you are not, you're, you're not slacking. <laughs> no, I, I was slack. like, yeah, I think the last relationship we were going to a movie and I said, well, that gives us 15 minutes, so let's use it now. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I don't waste any time, trust me. But that, that's a good oh, point. That's you know, I'm, now you, I'm, you, I've learned from you. Yeah, you, you're taught, you're taught, yeah, 15 minutes, hurry up, honey. It's, it's a, you know, you, you've been mentioning your show, so let's, let's tell people out there, tell the listeners how they can find your show, the Kate O show. And, um, you know, you are in London, England, but everything's on the internet now, so, um, I know you yeah. have a, you have a website, it's the Kate O Irugbu dot org and I'm going to spell that it's K A T E and O the letter O and your last name is I R O E G B U people out there write that down Kate O I R O E G B U dot org that'll all be on my uh, website when I get the show up on my YouTube channel too but and the name of the show is the Kate O show and you also have a Kate O blog spot uh, blog. And, and yeah, Kato Show. Mm-hmm. Dot blogspot. Yeah. Dot com. Dot com. So how yes. how often are you doing your show? Is it weekly? Yeah, weekly. Good. I do my show weekly now. Good, good. So we'd like people to get on there. And you, you're also a speaker. You're a motivational speaker. So I'm sure. Is are the places that you speak? Because this show runs in seventy five different countries. So. Um, do, okay. are you traveling? Are you mostly based in London where you do your speaking engagements? Do you travel? Yeah, I will be traveling this year. I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've just, you know, started going out to do speeches now, but I'll be going, I'll be having a speech in Lagos this year as well. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I'll be having one in Lagos because I've, I want to be supporting the Marvel Foundation, Marvel Sickle Cell Foundation. Mm-hmm. What What's the, the name of the, the foundation? The, the foundation to support those with sickle cell anemia. Wonderful. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Good, good, good. So do you yeah. put your speaking engagements are on your website, I'm sure, right? Yes, yeah, not, not yet. I don't have any on, on yet because I just started, you know, going yeah. out to speak because I was so busy doing some other stuff before. So I'm just having more time now for my show. Right. Okay. Well, that's I good. I used to work full time in the past. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we've got you on and, and people can read what you're writing on kateoblogspot.com too. So that's a good thing. You know, they can catch up with you there as well. So. That's yeah, what good. I do on my blog spots, I just put up lots of the videos for marriages, like those videos I've put up there too. I do most of my communication now 
via video because I think uh, it's more visual and um, mm-hmm. and I just do more of the video instead of writing. Right. Okay. I do write write up underneath, you know, briefly on my Facebook, but I do more of the video communication. So I put upload most videos okay. on marriages on my marriage web uh, on my blog. Okay. Because the blog marriage is to be enjoyed and not endured. That's, that's the right. blog. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's the, the blog. That's and the that's, uh, those page. Are Once you get onto the page, that is what you see for us. Because yeah. I believe that marriage is something that is sweet. Okay? But the same is, both parties need mm-hmm. to, you know, be fully committed to, to the relationship mm-hmm. and to understand what marriage is in the first place. Because people think marriage is just a place to have children. Really? And some think, oh, it's a place for both of us to come together to support our financial need and all that. It's, 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 not, it's more than that. Mm-hmm. It's a total package. You cannot, you know, leave one aspect of it untouched. Because I said to someone, say, if you leave this, you know, sexual intimacy outside your marriage, you're already separated already. You've mm-hmm. already separated that relationship. Right. Not, it's not only when couples go to divorce stage or separate physical separation that is when there's no marriage because i believe that when couples are living under the same roof as total strangers as school minders because that's what so many marriages are today they live mm-hmm. together under the same roof but instead of having intimate relationship they are just mm-hmm. co-minders to their children that's what they are so when you're living as co-minders to your children you call that marriage mm-hmm. you're just not telling yourself the truth Right. I, I believe that's true. I do. And you know what? I'm going to open the lines. We're already halfway through the show. So I'm going okay. to ask anybody out there that has a question, uh, if you're in a marriage, if you have, uh, you want some advice from a marriage expert, now's the time to call yeah. in. 949-313-8880. We're on the line with Kate O from the Kate O Show. She's the host. And, um, and she writes all her own material and, uh, she's got a great show going on there. And, and, and you, the YouTube channel, how do they find you? It's the Kate O show on the YouTube channel as well, right? On YouTube. Yes. Yeah, Kate yeah. O show. That's the YouTube channel. Then. Right. So let's hear and from my you. Face, hmm? Kate O show irregular as well. You can connect me on Facebook as well. I'm on Instagram as well. But on my YouTube channel is Kate space O space and show. That Good. is a gap in between the O and the show. Perfect. The case, okay. Yeah, the space just in between the Kato show. Kato show. Okay, so anybody out there is brave enough to call in and ask about their marriage, or if you're not married, what you can do maybe to be prepared for a marriage. If you are thinking about getting married or engaged, this is a good person to talk to too because then you'll know for sure that you're getting into the right thing. So again, it's 949-313-8880. Um, I don't know. We'll just let people call in if they do, hopefully. And um, if not, we're just going to keep chatting. So we're, we're going to keep going because I wanted to talk to you about one of you. We've touched on it, but one of the biggest problems in a marriage it seems is money so what happens when finances become a battleground yes i believe that you know finances can become a problem in marriage but Mm -hmm. if both parties you know actually understand what marriage is all about i don't think it should be a real problem that's why i said in the first place that if you go into a married relationship, there is a why, mm-hmm. you know, the marriage should come in the first place. So if you're both, if you, if you're, you know, your own, uh, your own, you know, reason for marriage is the same as mine. If the financial challenges come, it's for something both of us to address and, you know, and look for how to resolve it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't bring a, a problem really because Many, when people say finances, a major issue in marriage, that's one aspect of marriage I've never had, you know, mm-hmm. any, you know, any concern for my 16 years of marriage. But I believe you that a lot of couples could struggle with that, especially when one have a different mindset, different habits of spending, or one is any more than one, that could become a problem. And especially when people run you know, different accounts and have different, 
you know, agendas, mm -hmm. that is when it becomes a problem. But as couples, if your plans, you know, the, 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 the things you do with your money, like investments, if it's together, you shouldn't really have problem most times. But what happens is that the man, you know, have his own agenda, is trying to build a house, and especially if people from, you know, where I come from, Africa, you have a man telling you he's building a house in his village, but the property is buying, the property bought there that he's developing, the wife's name is not on that document. You can see that. Oh. And now the woman goes ahead and buy a plot of land in his own village or his own town and try to develop that. So now both people, in as much as you've got married, in as much as we are two in marriage, but we become one. Once you accept that marriage vow, we should not treat you know, husband and wife or husband and wife should not treat themselves as two individuals. It's one. So why people have concerns about and, and struggle and issues with money in marriage is because they have failed to see themselves as one entity. That is why. Oh, I see. So you're saying, do you then think all marriages should have joint accounts and be all their money together? Because a lot of Even people you don't. don't have to, you don't. You don't have to have a joint account. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying he, here is, is that even if you have your separate accounts, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is this: the goals you have to achieve together as couples, you should be. It should be a joint goal. You shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. For instance, you're thinking about you know, getting um, a property, or you want to invest in yourself to develop yourself. Mm -hmm. For instance, if something both of you could say then and say, okay, this time, I, by this time, I want to go, excuse me, I want to further, my, further in this area, I will need some money to do that. Both of you come together and say, yes, yes, this is when you are going for do this, this money should be, how much would you need? You come together, you talk about it and say, okay, this is what you need for that. What this person will say, okay, this is when I'm going to do mine, is the planning, is understanding. I don't believe finances should be an issue in marriage at all. Whether both couples are working or one is working or the other is not working, finance should be the least problem in marriage if both couples actually have seen themselves as one entity. Right. Well, and again, it's communication too. It's like you need to know yeah. what page you're both on and that you're both uh, trying to achieve the same goals together. Goals, oh, that's it. Right. Yes, no. All mutual, all, 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 all your, um, um, all your goals should be something that is beneficial for bo to both of you. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not separate. You know, you're not different individuals. So if you, if you see your husband or your wife as part of yourself, then asking or helping to, to, you know, to progress in their career should be something of joy to you. So, but oftentimes people don't, you know, see their spouse as part of them, even though they, they, they live together as husband and wife for, for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they still believe, no, this is my wife and this is mine. Mm -hmm. And I don't really tend to understand that because it shouldn't be like that for couples. You don't have to have separate accounts, but if your husband, you know, is doing well or have a problem, you should have a problem as well. That is what I believe marriage should be. Well, and if yeah, your husband is fine, you should be doing fine as well. Right. Well, my whole belief on relationships in general is is that two people should come together to make each other better people. Both of you lift exactly. each other up all the time, and as much exactly. as you can. You know, it's like it's it's about. Uh, both of you lifting each other up, not just one of you doing it all the time. And I think a lot of that too is I think a lot of relationships suffer when people stop appreciating the other person and start taking them for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that is why I said on on my show as well that it's important that on a daily basis the man actually tell the woman how much you love her and appreciate her, and the woman as well. Also, let the man know how much you appreciate his love and care as well. It's important because oftentimes we tend to overlook that. And I will also mention that you might be thinking, why every day? Why on a daily basis? It's too, it's, you know, because 
you might be thinking, oh, maybe once in a while because you can't be doing that every time. But do you know with social media now, people are even doing that to people who are distant friends to them or people they barely know on social media appreciating them. Oh, you look good. Oh, you, I like your this. You're so, you know, beautiful. You do it anyway. Mm-hmm. You're doing it to people you, you barely know. So how much your spouse, who is half of your half, why can't you appreciate them? Right. <laughs> it's true. Everything's on social media now, so it's true. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. I, I also, I, mm-hmm. I did it. I lost my husband almost 23 years ago. He went shopping one oh, day and never returned. You hear that? Yeah. He mm. had an aneurysm and, um, he died, uh, before I could, I mean, he, he died a few days later, but we couldn't find him for a few days. So for me, when I'm with anybody, I, even with my daughter or, uh, my parents or certainly in a relationship, I always tell that person I love them every day, every single day, no, because you them. never yeah. know, you never know, you know, so, I know. and, and so it's, it's very important, honestly, because I said, to, <clears throat> I said to someone, the other, I said, when your spouse goes out mm-hmm. and you don't say anything to each other, mm-hmm. you're waiting for your spouse to come back home before you can, you know, tell your spouse, you know, what about if your spouse don't come back home? Mm-hmm. Well, because that's... we've seen people who have gone back out to, you know, got out for work, and on on yeah. on their way to work, they had an accident either on the tram mm-hmm. or the, you know, mm-hmm. well, or in the car accident, and they never came back. So well, yeah, I, I... what every time we have to appreciate each other is very, you know, important. It's something we should embrace. Right. And I... another thing that is so, you know, common in relationship, married relationship, is couple failing to have respect for each other respect yes it's respect important. yeah mm-hmm. yeah you, i think you need because to because i respect. believe that yeah. in a married relationship it doesn't matter how long you've known yourself because that's what i've experienced you know seeing it happening people see complain about it but they don't know why mm-hmm. couples tend to lose respect for one another they right. have to you know they, you see your spouse as you know being something that is so common. You don't you don't really have respect anymore. You just you know either is you underestimate each other's you know or what I don't know. But the respect in the relationship respect in relationship is very key. Respecting each other and respecting your spouse, family, I think it's going to help you know, it's to help a long way in married relationship as well. Because it's only when you respect your spouse that is when you will respect their likes and their dislikes. Mm-hmm. Well, I because think it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. no, go ahead, finish, finish, please. Because it doesn't matter, you know, how long or maybe how young your marriage is or how long you've been married. Mm-hmm. If you don't respect your likes, your spouse's likes and your dis and her dislikes, you know, it, it could be an issue as well. Because oftentimes people tend to say. Oh, my husband is nagging too much. Oh, my wife is nagging too much. Just because of this little thing. They call it little. But if you only respect your spouse, that is only when you will look at that complaint that they are complaining and look at them and look at it with all love and, 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 and humility and say, listen, this woman don't like this or this man don't like this. Why must I do it? It could just be the man saying the wardrobe messed up and he doesn't like it. It's like his shoes of range, and you are the woman who is expecting to come and arrange the house, but you throw everything apart, and he's complaining, and you say, please, yours is too much, you just nag. It's very important in marriage that people, you know, respect their spouse's, you know, likes and dislikes. And for you to do that, you must respect each other first. Oh, I agree. I think the two pillars, like the two, two bookends, are trust and respect. Because you you can't it it holds everything together too you know it's like it you you have to trust each other and you must respect each other which is just hopefully in any relationship that's what keeps it going you know I truly believe that we're running out of time so if there's somebody out there yeah. that wants to call in we are running out of time so nine four nine three one three eight 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 zero a question about your marriage or even a partnership. You don't have to be married if you're living together and you're you're 
committed, then that's the same thing to me. I mean, you, you, if you have a question about that, please call in. Kate is on the line from the Kate O Show in London, England. And bless you for calling on a Sunday night in the middle of the night, middle of the morning for you, actually. Um, now, you yeah. know what's going to happen is I'm going to get a million phone calls and, and emails tomorrow because everybody will, some people don't want to go live on the air and some yeah. people are going to not think of anything and then think of 5,000 things tomorrow. So is there a way for people to reach you if they have a question? Yeah, they could email me on ketoirebo at gmail.com. Okay. And I'll I'll spell that. It's Kate O I R O E G B U because it's an yeah. interesting name and I love how you say it, so it's good. And <laughs> and they can they can find you on your blog spot as well, Kate O blogspot dot com and that's also the Kate O Show. Yeah. Kate O Show blog dot blogspot dot com. Kate O Show blogspot dot com. Dot, yeah. Blogspot dot com, mm-hmm. yes. There you go. This is a very interesting conversation and you are becoming quite an expert at this whole marriage and, and I, I think it's wonderful because it, it's a, it, you know, pe- people have a hard time and they don't want to, they... Exactly. That's why I said, even if you're watching this show and mm-hmm. you actually been enduring your marriage and you don't know how to enjoy it, call in. Yeah. You know, just call in because... People have, I, I've met a lady before who said to me that she complained to her mom about the, you know, the stress she was going through in her marriage. And her mother said to her that marriage is about endurance. That, and she said to her, did, did she know how much she went through? The mom is not speaking now. That the mom is telling her daughter that she herself went through some terrible time with her dad. Mm-hmm. So indirectly, the mom is expecting the daughter to also go right. to undergo the same stress that she endured with her husband. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, right, and that's not good. You know, she's it's the apples not falling far from the tree. If that's all she's hearing, and that's not good because then she believes that she has to endure it like her mother did, exactly. and that's not true. You know, it's not. And this lady was saying that she, there was a time she used to just cry throughout the night. Mm-hmm. No, she actually, she was so stressed. Even before I came in, she has already spoken to my son. Do you know, I actually cried throughout the night because of how my husband was treating me. And I'm like, what? Right. So what advice so did you give her? things happen every day that people just try to use makeup to cover face and walk out and seems it's okay. And what I said on my show is this. It doesn't matter how much we pretend that all is well. Mm-hmm. You know, stressful marriage, emotional stress is a killer. Stress oh, yeah. is a killer. Because those are what triggers the body cells, changes in your body cells. That's what causes cancer. So you can't pretend about it. Even if you pretend about it, for those that have children, your children are watching you, your marriage like a video. That's what I said on my show. And tomorrow your children grow up and they don't want to get married. And you're wondering, why don't you want to get married? Because they saw you enduring your marriage. Mm -hmm. That is not what marriage is meant for. Marriage is to be enjoyed. So if we cannot get it right and enjoy it, why why do you think you can, you know, introduce your son or your daughter into something that is not going on well with us? So that is why we must get it right. Right. Exactly. And then, and they got married for a reason, you know, I mean, I think uh, if if they can work through that, that's great, you know, but I think a lot of people, um, it, it's like you have, it's like people, some people get scared, you know, they've had a bad marriage already or bad relationships, or they're like this woman who's, you know, they don't want to get married because they've seen how their parents were. And then, you know, you, but I think that just comes down to they've not met the right person. You know, if you're with the right person, you can you can you can get through things and enjoy it and not be in enduring. I mean, every marriage is going to have issues and things are going to come yep. up. But every relationship okay. does, even with with your friends, those things. I mean, your parents, your friend, every relationship does. But marriage I think teaches us more about ourselves 
than anything else in the world. You know, okay. it, it makes us look at ourselves too. So it, um, it's the biggest growth implementation tool. One of the biggest tools out there, I think, for us to, to become better people ourselves. You know, of course, because and, uh, the way we handle our marriage, you know, we actually reflect on the society as well. Because if you if you happy if you happy in your marriage, you the tendency for us to bring up happy children as well. But when we have, you know, because when people say, "Oh, failed marriage," for me, a marriage that is for ten years, twenty years, thirty years doesn't make it successful. So when people talk about that's why I use the word, you know, suffer, when marriage suffers. Because marriage tends to suffer before it gets to, you know, divorce. But people just talk about, oh, my marriage failed. Oh, yours is, you're lucky, your marriage is still going on. No, it's not true. Because there are people who are in marriage, but they are not, are they truly in marriage? No. You can only be, you know, your marriage can only be successful if you can be friends. So if you are in marriage for 50 years but you cannot actually live, you know, as friends mm-hmm. for once or, or to understand yourself and just respect your likes and your dislikes, you know we have challenges. But when we have challenges, can we resolve them? Because right. the truth is we tend to think because we are in marriage for 5, 10, 20 years, all oh, the marriage is successful. If that person in that marriage come out and tell you, open to you, what they go through every day or every week, you will tell yourself, you better don't even try it. Get into a, rela- a married relationship. That's what I'm talking about. So we can come out and show to the public that all is well, but the truth is that our children are watching the marriage and marry like a video. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow, whatever way you handle your marriage is going to you know, have effect in your children's relationship as well because you can't hide from them. They see the real thing. Mm-hmm. So that is why it's important as husband and wife to mm-hmm. ensure that we enjoy our marriage. Because when you enjoy your marriage, you, you, will, you will know yourself that you're actually in marriage. Because I said to people on my show, I said, marriage is sweet. It just needs, you know, commitment for both parties. Mm-hmm. Marriage is sweet. It needs commitment from both parties. And it all depends on how you're on, what your understanding of marriage, of a successful marriage is all about. Some people might think, oh, I have children, I've been married for 10 years, my marriage is successful. But for me, a successful marriage is a marriage where husband and wife are actually friends. That is when a marriage is successful. Right, exactly. Well, we are now almost out of time. I've got a minute. I'm just going to throw the number out there one last time, 949-313-8880. Now we only have time for a quick call. If anybody's brave enough, call in now. And if not, then you know where to find Kate O at the Kate O Show on YouTube and um, on her website, Kate O Irugbu, I-R-O-E-G-B-U dot org. And I'm going to do a really nice shout out to my parents, my mother and father. Uh, they are in August, God willing, it's, uh, their anniversaries in August. They will be married oh, six, 69 years. Wow. This that's, year. That's, so that's centuries. <laughs> God bless them. No, 69 that's years. Decade. Next year. Wow, nearly seven decades. Yes. That's great. Almost seven decades. Next year will be a big And they did not kill each other. And they still mm-hmm. like each other. <laughs> They still, they love each. You know, I think they can't, they, they, um, they can't live without each other. They, but 69 years. So I have to do that shout out to mom, dad. Congratulations in August ahead of time. Congratulations to them as well. 69. And also before I leave, I would like to say this, that Mm -hmm. in the marriage relationship, we should know that the marriage Mm -hmm. we need, you know, is based on love. And because marriage is the only institution where we actually obtain our certificates before we actually start lectures, should not make us to treat marriage anything less. Okay? Marriage is an institution you have to learn every day, and in learning, you will get better. And also know that 
the love you do not nurture will surely die. So in your love relationship, there must be romance in it. There must be sex. There must be love. There must be, you know, communication. There must be time. You must invest time in your relationship. You cannot be too busy for your spouse. Right. So if we, if, we, if we want to enjoy our marriage, we should invest time in our married relationship. And as I said, sexual intimacy has become a big issue, so it's important we revive our sexual relationship with our spouse. And as I said, you should learn to accessorize and make it look something good that you're looking forward to. Okay? Mm-hmm. Don't shy away from it. Women, when you need it, tap your husband. If you can't tap, get on him and do what you need to do. Okay, you're not raping him, but you put him in that mood, and he will tell you, let's go. Okay, so that is what we should do to enjoy our marriage. Too many complaints here and there, but if we do the right thing, if we work on it, and have mutual respect for one another, we'll be successful in our marriage, and we enjoy it. It's good to enjoy marriage. I must tell you, Hassan, I don't know, you know, but, but I believe that when you enjoy your marriage, it will give you longevity in your life. You, you will live, you will live, you will, you will even you know, have effect on your health as well. Because emotional stress, mm-hmm. emotional trauma is a killer. So if we can enjoy our marriage, we we'll live longer and we we'll bring up, you know, children that will actually influence the society positively. Thank oh. you so much for watch for listening to us and we believe that as you've listened, you're going to actually have tips to enjoy your marriage and if you have any question any contribution, as Ms. Hassan has said, you have my contact. Mm-hmm. You have my email. It's ketoiregwa.gmail.com and my website my, uh, .com and my website is www.koiregwa.org. Okay, and my YouTube channel is Keto Show. Right. Um, it's my pleasure to be with you, Ms. Hassan, on this show. Thank That's you very wonderful. much. Wonderful. Call me Servette, please. And it's mm-hmm. you are Thank delightful. You and much. you keep doing what you do, Kate. I think it's awesome. And you're doing a lot of good work. You've got a foundation going for sickle cell anemia that you're working with on that and, and doing amazing work for, for marriages everywhere. And you keep doing what you do, Kate. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so very much, much for calling nice, in from London, pleasure. England. From London, England, Cato. Thank you so much. You have a good night. You take thank care. Thank you very much. You're you welcome. have a good morning from London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good morning. Rise and shine. I know. Thank you. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. And well done for what you're doing as well. You're a great woman. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Take care. All right, dear. Take Bye-bye. care, love. Okay, that was Cato from London, England in the wee hours of the morning. I think it's 3 a.m. there. I think, yeah, because they're eight hours ahead. So, and it's just going on 7 p.m. on the West Coast here, Pacific time. So it, it's 3 a.m. there. I'm sure she, I'm sure her husband is like, huh? <laughs> We're talking about marriages and he's probably like, what the heck? What? <laughs> Anyway, that was a wonderful show, and I appreciate you all listening, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. There is no show next week. Intuitive Inc. will take a break, as it is the Academy Awards. And spoiler alert, I'm not getting an Academy Award this year. So, And I say not this year, because you never know about next year. So stay tuned for that one. But the Academy Awards are going to go on, uh, uh, and I'll be there, so I'm not, I'm not getting an award this year but like I said I will next year hopefully but um, anyway I'll be there so I won't be doing my show live next Sunday and I will pick up again March 11th can you believe it's March almost already so we are marching forward with time let me tell you but I the following Sunday I will have Judith Neal on the line she's quite somebody she's an author a consultant a speaker a scholar a business leader she's the foundation of the uh she's the foundation she's the founder of the association for spirit at work um she's worked with some amazing corporations on uh, incorporating business into the workplace uh, did I say business into the workplace? You need business in the workplace. I meant spirit in the workplace. <laughs> so I'm getting tired too. It's not even 3 a.m. here. So I have no excuse. 
Anyway, the following Sunday after that, I have Dean uh, Schleuder, uh, the 18th. He's written a book called Fearless, Living Beyond Fear, Anxiety, Ang- Anger, and Addiction. And some of us ha- have experienced at least one of those, I know. So please stay tuned. Come back after next Sunday. We've got an amazing march full of great authors and leaders Judith Neal's an incredible author, too. Anyway, I'll be talking to her next week. You need to find me. I am at servetthassan.com, S-E-R-V-E-T-H-A-S-A-N.com. The website is going through a nice, massive reconstruction, uh, so that's why I haven't updated it lately. The blog is to everything is. I have been away for a while, and so I am coming back bigger and better than ever. Bigger, way bigger. So that it's it takes time to get those things set up. We'll be doing webinars and all those kinds of things. So, and like I said, it's already almost March, but um, and, and it it just takes time, but it'll get there, and it'll get there when it's supposed to get there. So no stress, and that's what we all need to remember. And I hope you do remember things happen when they're supposed to, you know, divine timing. I truly believe in that. So moving forward with everything, we've got a great, I've got a new book, two new books actually I'm working on right now. One's fiction, one's nonfiction, all coming very soon. It'll all be up and running and the website should be done actually not too long from now as well. And then I'll have uh, different websites for different projects for different books which I haven't done before before, but I will be doing that from now on as well anyway I thank you all for listening that was a great show with Kate O and we will move forward onward and upward and I have to tell you like I always do be you to the full because that's what's really beautiful that's what makes your life work you can read as many books as you want you can do as many vision boards as you want and you can do an uh, you know you, we should meditate every morning please do do that all of those things are good none, none of that's bad for you anything that reinforces that positivity inside of you is great but really it all comes down to being you to the full because when you are your true authentic self Things happen and it's magic. Take care. Talk to you next time in March, a couple of weeks from now. Good night.